channel. Hello everyone, I'm Pavel Odintsov, I'm author of FastNetMon and CTO of FastNetMon Limited. Today I would like to talk about DDoS attacks. What is DDoS attack? Uh, let's start from uh, uh, expanding this abbreviation into distributed Daniel of service. Uh, okay, let's skip first letter because it makes things a bit more complicated and let's talk about Daniel of service. What does it mean? It may mean so many things and especially it may have reflection in the real world it may have reflection on specific, very sophisticated attacks against specific, complicated applications, or it may mean attack against your network infrastructure. Uh, and here we are going to talk about attacks against network infrastructure. So we are not going to talk how you can actually disrupt uh, some website or can you have this can disrupt potentially uh, billing processing system or ticket processing system or something different. So in this case, we are going to talk about attacks which may disrupt your communication network. So let's be specific in our terms and for uh, next videos about it, like we will cover only attacks which have direct point to disrupt your network. What does it mean disrupt your network? Makes your network uh, may be not completely dead, but sig significantly degraded. Uh, which may not be able to implement its main op-op point because in this case, main, what is the main point of network? To communicate services, to connect multiple services, to connect people with services and if your network fails to implement this idea and fails, fails to implement this goal, then it's disrupted. So it's, it's one of the main points, it's to disrupt your network. Okay. And in this case, Daniel of service means that like your network equipment will be overloaded or your uh, upstream channels will be overloaded or something more sophisticated will happen with your equipment or both of them actually. So it may be your equipment which is overloaded and at the same time it may be your upstream which is overloaded but at the same time it evolves more things. And let's back to distributed. What does it mean? Because to disrupt large networks, we need so much traffic. It's not enough to have like one machine, few machine, ten machine. And that's the reason why DDoS attacks is called dist distributed. Uh, it's, there are no clear explanation how many hosts and attackers need to be involved in this attack. Uh, but let's be more specific, something in, in scale of thousands. Sometimes it's on scale of millions, sometimes it's on scale of tens of millions. So it's a serious number, it's not five, it's not ten, so it's something large. And okay, we are quite specific about what we can do and what actually does it mean, like distributed the other service. Uh, from network perspective, it's just enormous amount of packets well-known packets, it's IPv4 packets, IPv6 packets, IP, TCP packets, UDP packets, ICMP packets, JRE packets, or something more specific. And, and their main goal uh, is to fill your upstreams or overload your network equipment. How your network equipment can be overloaded? And in a simple case, it's uh, uh, packet rate. So, to, like, and in that case, point of attacker side to generate as much as possible packets to degrade your router or your switch. And for many hardware based, I mean ASIC based routers or switches, it's quite tricky because ever for quite cheap 48 port switch, you may expect enormous uh, switching capacity in scale of terabits which makes us very complicated overload. But uh, routers are more sensitive about it because uh, just to keep full BGP table with hundreds of thousands routes and routes, every single packet over all of them, it's, it's quite challenging. And even more interesting if we start talking about firewalls. So, as I said, like it's almost impossible to overload switch because it, 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 thinks, it, it implements very simple things and, in very, and can, it can do it very fast. Routers, again, more complicated, but problem with routers, routers are expensive. And routers may be implemented in a software. It may be just Linux box in some rare cases. And in this case, you need to, to have lots of CPU power to route packets and you have no fancy ASIC 
uh, microchip to do it for you because it's again it's exactly expensive so and if your network is based on software routers uh, when I say software routers what does it mean it may be uh, just Linux boxes Bird or Quagga or it may be uh, Vios in, uh, or Vajata or it may be Microtik. Of course Microtik has some options to offload like some routing decisions to hardware but not all of them. But when we are talking about uh, Juniper MX or Cisco SR or Nokia routers, uh, in this case almost all of them Almost all telecom grade models they have option to route it and hardware. So, which makes it again very complicated to overload them. So, looks like we have no problem. But we have one more type of device which is called firewalls. And this is how it starts. So, main point of firewall to stop malicious traffic from coming into the network. Great deal, of course. We can control everything which what's Ending coordinate and what's actually living coordinate, but the problem is uh, most of firewalls they, they implement very deep inspection of traffic. Again, switches they don't care, switches they mostly work on level 2, sometimes on level 3. Routers, okay, routers focus on level 3, but again, even level 3 it's simple. But to implement proper filtering, firewalls need to go to deep level 4 and up to level 7, or sometimes it's more complicated. And so, which makes them very sensitive to bursts of traffic. So, and if your network uses hardware grade routers and uh, uh, have lots of switches, and you ha if you have somewhere firewalls, they may be first victim of DDoS attack because just to generate a few hundred thousands of packets per second, you may like attacker can use just few machines. It's not sophisticated attack types, but it's enough to knock down most of the firewalls available in market. So. We start to have clear understanding of problem. And different point is your upstream. Of course, many apps, if you have direct connectivity with tier one carrier and you have multiple hundred G ports, apparently you are not main audience of this story because for so many DDoS attack types, you just don't care because your network will not be degraded if you have uh, lots of capacity, if you have lots of redundancy in your backbone and you have hardware routers most of the time a our type of DDoS attacks will be unnoticed for you 10G, we don't care, 100G, mm. again, not, not, not a big deal like 1 terabit, yes but like all this kind of about hype about like multi hundred gigabit attack you know, of course it, it may happen but not with you, it's very unlikely because in many cases behind uh, DDoS attacks there is a clear business motivation. It may be your competitor or it may be just decision of some kind of uh, activist group against you. But there, all, all the time there is motivation and if you run a small medium sized ISP it's actually a really small chance that you will attract multi terabit attack. It's possible in some cases, definitely it happened in previous, but it's not something you need to be prepared. It's almost impossible to prepare for this kind of circumstances. Okay, so and what we can do, and what is the next uh, weak point against DDoS attacks? So it's your upstream. Uh, what does it mean? It means if you buy a reasonable capacity like 1G or 10G from your upstream, it means it may be uh, easily loaded and it's for properly built networks with hardware routers it's one of the first frontiers which need to be defended so if you have proper equipment in your network everything in your network redundant you have lots of spare capacity but you have just five 10g connections with your upstreams and then like it's Simply easy to generate this amount of traffic, and literally everything in your network will work fine, but your upstreams will be filled up to 100%, and they will start dropping everything else. So they will mostly focus on processing malicious traffic, and nothing you can do in this case. This is the reason why this is like this very complicated and very dangerous. Even with proper implementation of all steps, again, you need to do it. You need to invest in your network, you need to invest in a uh, training of your engineers to build it this way. But if your ISP can't handle this traffic, there's so much you can do. You, li you literally just give up.
you surrender, immediately surrender to attacker side and you cannot do anything. What you can do, of course you have multiple options how you actually can defend the attack. And so, subscribe to, for my next videos and keep uh, fighting with DDoS attacks. Stay with us. Thank you. Bye.